All right, so I figured I should make a video. Uh, I just uh, picked this thing up about a week ago. It's a Kubota BX23S. This is the 2021 model. The uh, BX23S comes standard with the uh, backhoe as well as the front loader. There's all kinds of implements that you could buy for this thing to put on the back of the three-point hitch or on the front you put a snowblower, forks. It does have the uh, like a skid steer quick connect. You just lift these up and you can pop on uh, pallet forks or whatever you want on the front. As far as implements, I didn't buy anything just because the wait time is ridiculous as well as the new prices are pretty crazy. So I'm going to wait and just buy some stuff that's used from a local farm store or I don't, I don't mind driving as well. So this is the smallest subcompact tractor with a backhoe I believe that you can get. It uh, it has it packs quite a punch though. The loader, obviously it's... The whole unit only weighs about 1,500, 1,600 pounds, so the loader will only lift close to 500 pounds, but that's just fine with me for uh, saw jobs, mulch jobs, and uh, a lot of trenching I do, so that would be uh, pretty good with the backhoe on the back. It had the claw. I believe it was only like a $120 uh, upgrade from the factory to put the claw on the back, so I thought, you know, well, let's give it a thumb. It has two stabilizer jacks. And that's controlled just with these two buttons here. You push them down to go down, up to go up. And this is pretty standard for, it's kind of like an excavator, kind of not, but it was very easy to figure out how to use the backhoe if you have any experience with uh, machinery. This is the dash cluster here. I'm still learning what everything is. So if I miss something, just feel free to leave it in the comments. This is the throttle right here. It's best when you're driving these things, always keep it, even if you're just literally driving, lifting the loader a little bit, no weight, keep it on the loader backhoe option. Just uh, because the throttle, you don't want to be running your hydraulics with low pressure going through them. Uh, it's just a, a bad deal. And yeah, it came with, uh, it comes with these skid steer quick attach uh, hooks. Basically not these hooks, these, these quick, uh, quick attach pieces basically just pop them up and you could attach pallet forks whatever you want these hooks i had welded on afterwards just uh in case i'm ever stuck number one number two if i have to lift anything that's heavy out of the truck out of uh, the trailer i can do it just just fine with this um, you have to buy this as an option the uh, cutting edge it doesn't come with a cutting edge so i suggest if you are going to get this buy the cutting edge just because you don't want to ruin the bucket after uh, a couple uses What's really, really cool about this thing is when you're taking the loader off, it's literally that up right here, same thing on the other side, and these all come off at once. You push this up and you can take off the hydraulics all at once, which is pretty, pretty cool. Here, this is the control for the loader, pretty much like a skid steer. As far as this, this is high range and low range. When you're operating this, you wanna keep it in high range pretty much. Think of it as in you're driving a pickup truck with four wheel drive. You're always in, when you're in four wheel drive, you're always in four high. The reason you're always in four high, unless you're stuck in the mud, is the four low is more of that low torque range. It lets your RPMs go higher. And basically it will ruin your engine if you're using it too much. If you're using it too much, if you're not stuck, if you're just going doing day-to-day -day tasks like lifting pallets, driving around, definitely keep it in four-wheel drive, or sorry, two-wheel drive high. Don't put it in two-wheel drive low because you don't need the extra torque unless, like I said, you're in deep mud, you're stuck, or you're doing something that's really, like if you're lifting something really heavy on the front, you might want to put it in low. That's what that's there for. It doesn't have a good description with the turtle and the rabbit. I would have made something a little bit easier just uh, because they, you think of a throttle when you think of that. And technically it is a throttle, but it's not. Over here, I believe this is your deck height for your mower. I'm not gonna put a mower on this because I don't I don't think it'll do too well on the grass. The grass here is really soft, and uh, I'm pretty sure these tires, the industrial tires, will chew it right up. But who knows? This is your three-point hitch height. This right here is your lockers. So you can lock the, uh, I don't know if it's the back axle or the front axle. Definitely don't keep this all down all the time or else uh, you'll be driving with a locked up axle and you'll probably tear the whole tractor apart. This is forward. 
This is reverse. To put the parking brake down, there's two pedals. Push them down at the same time. That'll that'll park. Put the parking brake engaged, and then you could uh, just pop that one when you're ready to go, and it'll pop up both of them at the same time. We'll take a look under the hood. A lot of people have complaints about this mechanism here. But honestly, it's not that bad, as I say when I'm not, when I'm using one hand to open it. All right, there it is. <laughs> Maybe it is that bad. So yeah, real super small engine. It's a three cylinder diesel. No complaints, it's pretty powerful. All right, let's start it up. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. The reason I keep the hoe on the ground is because over time, even with the big $200,000 backhoes, whatever, everything leaks, cylinders do leak. So if you have it up, it's not a problem, but just be aware that if you are parking this beside a a car or up against the wall back there let's say what would happen is you would have it straight up and then over time if you leave it for a couple weeks sitting that cylinder will just deflate 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 and you'd end up with either a hole in your wall or a nice dent and the same goes for so the hole stabilizers as well as the loader too everything loses power and uh, not power, everything loses the uh, pressure that's built up in the cylinder over time. All right, so starting this thing, it's pretty warm in here, so I don't need to let the glow plugs go, but I'll show you just how it lights up. That's there, that's for glow plugs. Two, two and a half hours almost. Once you have everything shut off, you can fiddle with these hydraulics just to let all the pressure out of the line. 
this is a good one to show you because in the loader there is a bunch of hydraulic pressure that's built up in there honestly i've never had a problem in any other machine that i've owned with leaving the pressure built up unless you're taking the the, the attachment off but uh the dealer told me before you stop using it let the pressure out of the cylinders so that is what i'm gonna do yeah anyway, that's just by going back and forth like that Hey guys, so this is my Kubota BX23S. If anyone has any questions, or uh, yeah, follow along for the journey with this. I have this, I have the truck that I have a Snow Dog V plow on, I have a few trailers, uh, dump trailers, float trailers. So if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, please subscribe and like the video.